What can you say of these expressions? There are those of research, intense. They're the expression of a permanent quest to understand, decipher, decode, and push back the limits of knowledge. Research is perpetual motion. It never stops. It was this motion and the will for open science that led the European Union member states to launch the European Open Science Cloud, a unique cloud that provides universal access to research data using a single platform. Science is a source of progress for humanity and is constantly evolving. To understand, decipher, decode, and push back the limits of knowledge, more inclusively, science, technology, innovation together have a vital importance to respond to major human and societal challenges. The expansion of information and computing technologies provides opportunities for training schemes to access science to foster knowledge societies. Consequently, the scientific research is progressing today towards the new paradigm of open science for a more open, transparent, collaborative, inclusive scientific practices. It is this movement for open science that has led the member states of the European Union to launch the European Open Science Cloud EOSC initiative. EOSC is part of an environment that is conducive to the use of scientific data. Such data must be easy to find, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, which is how science opens up to the world and to others. Open science has three ambitions. Change the way citizens could perceive research and public investment for research. Enable opportunities offered by the information computing technology today to allow everybody to participate in the scientific process. The third ambition is the one of sharing data by transferring knowledge within a different scientific communities, and this implies the interoperability of data. In one word, open science implies fair data, where fair means fundable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. This open science is materialized by EOSC through five clusters, real and focused on several differentiated themes. Among these five clusters is ESCAPE, which is in charge of major particle physics and astrophysics projects, two disciplines pioneering open science and data sharing. ESCAPE is one of the five science clusters that resulted from the H2020 topic initiatives of the European Commission aimed at connecting S3 infrastructures through cluster projects. ESCAPE is, is exactly that. It's the coming together of those particle physics and astronomy communities with the challenges of these very large experiments which are either here or soon coming. Uh, which will have very large volumes of data. And the techniques that we have developed in some of those areas are applicable to, to some of the others. And so the ESCAPE project is really bringing together the data management services, the, the sort of higher level scientific platforms, um, and recognizing the real commonality between the, the physics that both of those communities are doing. ESCAPE is part of an overall trend towards making sure that the science we do is open and accessible to, to everybody, not just uh, the scientific communities, but anybody that's interested. This new scientific method is not only a new way for scientific clusters to work together, it's a revolution that redefines the boundaries, both in space and in time. At the heart of the system, data. But data is only meaningful if it is understood, observed, shared, and analyzed. Alone in a compartmentalized environment, it loses value and power. One of the priorities of the ESCAPE project is to give data value. One of the biggest services and one of the keys is the whole data management area. So we are developing distributed data management services. We obviously rely on software 
a lot, not just the infrastructure software, but also application software. So that's another one of the services in the catalog that, that brings that together. The third service is around the virtual observatory, which is a pre-existing uh, collaboration, which brings together data from astronomy. Um, so there's a, there's a work package on, on the virtual observatory. And the last one is citizen science. It's also a tool for science, so having people um, in the general population who are interested is very important for us because it brings in uh, the general public to what we're doing. Without a software, the data that we are collecting and, and making public is not understandable, at least a major uh, part of the data that uh, is not understandable. So if you want to produce scientific outputs, you should think about, OK, I not only put out uh, my paper, but I also put out uh, the software that went with it. And of course, the, the underlying da data and wrap that all together so that uh, somebody else but also myself in five years uh, can reproduce what I did there. There, the teaching is really the important part. So uh, really education from the start. So uh, even from the students start uh, uh, to, to get a, uh, really accustomed to how uh, should I develop and how should I structure my daily work so that in the end, uh, uh, the publication is just a click away. Therefore, we are also striving together with the EOS community to, to bring that all together to a link uh, uh, th those catalogs of different communities also wider spread than escape together uh, and make it uh, interoperable. There, actually, there's also uh, uh, very much to gain in the sense of open science. Across the scientific landscape, the science platform has come to be a place where users can go to do their scientific analysis on the basis that the types of data they're working with are often very large. So instead of everybody trying to access this from their own local systems, the science platform provides them with a, a centralized location that they can bring their work and get, get that work done in one place. Within the ESCAPE project, we have a particular challenge because we are working with different research infrastructures, different experiments across Europe. And each of them have their own special requirements. They have their own particular storage services or their own particular compute systems, their own special types of data. So what we provide with ESAP is a single place where users can come and they access all the various services from across the different escape research infrastructures through a single unified consistent interface without worrying about all the various different underlying details. In astronomy, we use data from many different telescopes, from many different space missions, from all over the world by different projects done at different times. And the vision of the virtual observatory is that those data can be used together so that you can combine data from different instruments and put that together uh, so that you can uh, address some of the most important uh, scientific questions that are there today that require the use of data not just from one telescope, not just from one wavelength, but from many. So what we've done in ESCAPE is build standards that allow you to access data that covers the whole sky, and not just from one telescope, but from many. And those standards allow the description of complex regions on the sky. When you have a telescope that observes a region of the sky, it's usually uh, in a complex area, and one survey may cover one area of the sky, another survey may cover another area. In fact, those things may be done at one time and another. And these standards enable you to uh, characterize that region on the sky so that we can say, what is the region of overlap covered by this telescope and by another one? And one of the special things that we've done in ESCAPE is that we've extended that standard to include time so that you can say, what are the observations that are done on the same region of the sky at the same time? The data infrastructure for open science, it can be seen as a, as a global storage, which provides a storage service for the experiments. This means that experiments, they put data in this infrastructure. This data is shared across all the partner sites, across all the scientific community, and provides easy access to the people that, that need to analyze this data. But the data, this data infrastructure is useful for the science, for the heavy duty cycles. We need to think about the data recording 
from the experiments themselves. You have a, you have a telescope which is in, in an island, you have a telescope which is in the desert, you need to stream this data to this uh, large infrastructure. And the data is, uh, is secure and is, um, and is coherent. The checksumming, the data is not corrupted, is available everywhere. So this is from the experiment perspective. And this part of the data life cycle is run by the, by the, by the experiment experts, the, the people that run the data acquisition, the data management system. Once the data is in the data infrastructure, in this big infrastructure, then is there is the part of the open data. When we put the data at the, at the, the service of the first the people from the experiment, but also to the community at large, what we talk is about open data. This data can be made available to the whole public for learning, for teaching purposes, for citizen science. And we put a simple, simple access to the, to, to the people. They can basically download the files. Citizen science is a way of doing science. It is uh, like a biological computer is the way to think of it. What you have is you have a lot of uh, volunteers, often members of the public, who take part in scientific experiments and classify or data mine uh, uh, big complex data sets. In Escape, we have many citizen science projects. We've built some specifically for Escape and some back-end technologies to, uh, to help run the project. Uh, so, for example, we have a project um, looking for gravitational lensing, looking for warps in space and time. You have uh, two stars, one, well, one, one is a black hole and one is a star, orbiting each other really quite slowly. And if the black hole passes in front of the star, uh, you see the background star through the warped space-time of, of the black hole. And it gives it a pulse of brightness, and we are pe asking people to uh, wade through some uh, really inhomogeneous data sets to try to pick up these, these rare features and had some successes, so it's, it's been a really interesting project. These five services that make Escape a unique platform are already being used for very real research projects. The engagement in open science in Escape was already the result of a background analysis before becoming an opportunity for cross-fertilization action, actions within the, the Escape work program. And, and in fact, we uh, brought together uh, the uh, astrophysics community and the particle physics community with their own uh, excellences and uh, expertise uh, for the astronomy, uh, the uh, already know-how in terms of uh, open data management with the virtual observatory infrastructure, and from particle physics, uh, the um, expertise in uh, um, uh, exabyte scale data management and large scale distributed uh, computing. There is another important point is that our community at large can be defined early adopters of uh, information computing technology for uh, their data management and their data analysis. They are innovators in this field and they push uh, always the state of the art of uh, such a domain. In, in the test science project Extreme Universe, we deal uh, with the, the uh, idea of found some uh, finding in some way solution uh, or es uh, explanation to the physics of the universe. And this involves a different kind of, of a signal that uh, came to us from the universe that can give us a lot of information on the mechanism of the physical mechanism uh, that happen in the, in the universe. And we want to analyze this data in, in a way that can help us in uh, knowing more and more. Uh, the idea with this uh, test science project is uh, to uh, show uh, that scientists can work in an innovative uh, environment, uh, infrastructure, where uh, the science is open, so we want to share what our results, but we want to share the data, we want to share the software. We, can, we want to work on a common environment. We are able to um, apply an end-to-end -end workflow from the infrastructure to the results visualization, where we take advantage of the innovative solution that computer scientists can offer us. We can easily find, find, uh, have access to the data of the different experiments, perform our research or our analysis, and 
show the results and be uh, recognized for what we are doing. And this is what uh, EOSC uh, um, environment can offer us. If you just think about the matter, about 85% of the matter in the universe is unknown. And so we call that dark matter. So we're looking to see what it is and if the physical laws that uh, determine its presence are, are correct. And uh, this uh, dark matter science project that we have in Escape and EOSC Future tries to put together a few of them and uh, make sure that the results are all coming together to tell us more about dark matter. I am part of the CERN uh, infrastructure, the CERN laboratory. And uh, at CERN, we collide dark matter. We try to collide the known particles to find dark matter. But there are other experiments that are also part of escape that, for example, look in the sky to find traces of dark matter. And this is what escape is good at. It uh, combines people from all these different uh, uh, disciplines for dark matter in one single big project. So what we want is to make sure that we can share as many tools as possible and combine the results in the best way as possible, while also making all our research uh, reproducible and sustainable. So we need the, a place to put our data, that is the data lake. Then we need the uh, platforms and the repositories for our software to run all the algorithms, and that's the software catalog. And then we need um, a place where people can access uh, and uh, combine things together. And that is the, uh, the overall virtual research environment or the, the interface, the portal where people go and say, I want to look at these results, I want to reproduce this analysis. For us, it's really uh, a, a boost in the activity because you gain a lot of time that uh, usually you spend to restart the virtual environment. It's very good to have a, a structure to do this kind of things, a set of tools where we know where our data is and when, where we know how we can process this data. We also hope that by making this virtual research environment, the accessibility of uh, especially the data analysis part, because maybe the data taking, you have to do it on the instrument, but the data analysis part will become more accessible for more people. By collaborating, sharing, advancing together, Science, which has long been confined and sometimes hidden, is now opening up to others and the world. Escape by Design is the start of a new way of looking at one's own knowledge, but also that of others. The shared objective is to overcome divisions and constraints by liberating science. If escape today is a result, it's also a beginning, a very promising one. The current H2020 grant uh, of the ESCAPE science cluster is approaching its end. The successful work program, the achievements, the capacity of ESCAPE to build a global picture about open science and to give it a correct implementation is largely acknowledged today. The top-down approach of research infrastructures in ESCAPE willing to keep doing the cooperative actions, um, joining efforts, is today confirmed. The bottom-up request from concerned scientists not to interrupt, to maintain, to pursue the cross-fertilization in science and innovation that ESCAPE has been able to build up is strongly considered today. ESCAPE becomes a sustained scientific collaboration, federating major research infrastructures in particle physics and astrophysics, the concerned community at large, in order to consolidate the implementation of open science and pursue new topics for structuring the European research area, as well as fostering scientific and innovating impacts to society. <laughs>